everyone and welcome back to my channel where I make something that I've never made before every week. This week I'm trying out Joshua Weissman's recreation of the infamous Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich. This is actually one of the recipes that inspired me to start this channel. When I first saw Joshua Weissman's video, I thought, wow, it would be so cool if I could make that, but I'm just not good enough. But today, I'm gonna show past me that I was wrong and that I can make this recipe. So let's get started. Hi everyone, you're seeing a rare evening version of Cooking Wimp, at least for a part of it, because Joshua Weissman recommended that we marinate the chicken overnight. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then the rest of the recipe will be tomorrow. So let's go, okay. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much for the riveting explanation past me. So like I said, I'll be preparing the marinating liquid for the chicken. Actually though, does anyone have any tips on how to get the spices out of these tiny bottles? You can't fit your measuring spoons into the opening, and then when you try to pour it, you have no control. If you have a secret method, let me know. I'll add the chicken thighs to the marinade. And then I'll cover it and let it marinate overnight. See you guys in the morning. And thanks to the power of editing magic, it's the morning. And we're gonna start off by making Tang Zhong for our sandwich buns. Even though it has a Chinese name, Tang Zhong is a yeast bread recipe that originated in Japan. How this works is that we'll cook the flour and milk and water over some heat until it becomes gelatinized. And adding the pre-gelatinized flour to our dough will cause our bread to be moister and softer. I'll also bloom the yeast in some warm milk. And whisk the dry ingredients together. Now I'll start kneading the dough. And by I'll start, I mean the stand mixture will start. Cause this one's pretty strenuous guys, so I would use a stand mixer if you have one. While the stand mixture is spinning, I'll add the milk mixture and the egg and egg yolk to the dry ingredients. And this will mix until well incorporated. Every now and again, make sure to scrape down the sides. And then I'll add the softened butter one piece at a time, making sure that each piece is incorporated before adding the next one. And I'm sorry that this footage isn't very well shot, but if you've watched my brioche bread video, it's pretty similar to that. It's just that my poor table was shaking too much when the stand mixer was mixing, so I couldn't put the camera on the table. In fact, eventually I just put the stand mixer on the floor because I don't think my table could take it. But I'll knead this for 5 to 8 minutes. I'll grease a bowl with some oil. You can use a nonstick spray, but since I didn't have any, I just used vegetable oil. And then we'll shape the kneaded dough into a bowl. First by taking the sides and folding them into the center. and then flipping it over and kind of using our hands to slide it across our work surface like this 
so that we create tension on the top of the ball. When the top is smooth, you're good to go. I'll put the ball in the greased bowl, cover it and let it rest until doubled, about one to one and a half hours. And voila, the dough's doubled in size. And then we'll punch down the dough a little bit to release some of the gas. I learned that this is because we want the yeast and the sugar and the moisture to be closer together so that the fermentation will improve for the second rise and the flavor will improve for the bread. And then with my trusty bench scraper, I'll split this dough into six equal parts. And I'm also using a scale today to make sure that each bun is exactly the same size. And then I'll use the same technique as earlier to shape all of these little balls into little bowls. and just repeat for all the other pieces. And then I'll cover these and let them rise again for another one and a half to two hours or until doubled. I didn't have another same size sheet pan, so I used this glass bakeware, but if you have another same size sheet pan, use that instead. Right before baking, I'll brush them with a little bit of egg wash so they get that nice golden color. And don't be like me and leave ample space between your buns because uh, I moved them closer so that they could all fit underneath the glass bakeware but I forgot to move them back out and um, you'll see the consequences. <laughs> Ta-da! Even though some of them stuck together. As a final touch, I'll brush these with some melted butter. And now I'll finally work on the chicken that's been marinating all night. I'm spooning a bit of buttermilk into the flour mixture so that there will be more of those little crunchy pieces when we fry the chicken. And then I'll press each chicken thigh into the flour mixture, making sure there are no spots that aren't covered by flour. Joshua Weissman said aggressive pressing, so here I am pressing aggressively. <laughs> I'll fry each of these in oil heated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 7-ish minutes. And you'll know when it's done when the chicken's internal temperature reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we'll put the sandwich together. It's time to eat. <laughs> this one was a long one, guys. So I'm glad to finally be able to eat. And I gotta say, these guys came out looking so good, like a commercial. <laughs> um, these guys came out okay. <laughs> Let me talk about the good things first. This bun is definitely a keeper. 
If you want to experience making your own burger buns, I definitely recommend this recipe because the buns came out soft and sweet. But I think the issue was is that the chicken thighs were too thin. So you really didn't get like the juiciness of the chicken thigh. You just got a bunch of crunchy batter. But I think if you get those like super thick chicken thighs, this recipe will work out better for you than it did for me. And also next time, I would definitely add more cayenne because it's not very spicy at all. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe for a new recipe every week. And comment below, what's something that you've always wanted to make but never had the courage to try? I'll see you guys next week. Bye!